Okay, I think we are ready to roll. Hi guys, hi folks. It's a very exciting moment for me now because we're starting the Inglorious Academy. Today is 17th of October 2020 and it's 9 a.m. UTC, which means 11 in the morning, at least in Italy. Uh, I don't know where are you located, guys. I, I hope that the time is comfortable for you. And uh, this is the first thing that you can learn. You see the time, how it's formatted here? This is the usual kind of formatting that we use in programming. It's a standard ISO, ISO format, which has the day, month, the year, a T as a separator for the time, and then we've got the time, and the Z stands for Zulu time, which means the time zone of Greenwich. So, um, this first day, day zero, because in uh, programming we start always from zero, never from one, uh, it's all about introduction and a little bit of setup, and I will already start giving you a little bit of homework, which is actually more like games, so don't worry, it's nothing uh, that's difficult or, uh, or boring. Uh, the reason why we are here is that I would love to break the cycle, the usual uh, cycle in which people cannot get a job because they don't have experience, but they don't have experience because they can find a job. Here we are going to break this cycle and getting experience so you will be able to find a job in the IT market. It's not only that, there's many reasons why we are doing this, but still, as for the work point of view, we are going to build together an online portfolio during this uh, academy, which will last probably until the end of March, but let's see. So we will build uh, an online portfolio together and uh, this portfolio, you can show it to your uh, future employers. We will build a community on, uh, well, I decided Slack, but I'm still open to move to Discord if we need to. But still, I've got this um, Slack workspace and I'm going to invite you all to the Slack workspace so we can build a community together that helps each other by, I don't know, solving prob programming problems, but also finding a job, sharing uh, important or interesting job offers, etc, etc. Uh, at the end of this uh, academy, I could probably also issue a certificate, a digitally signed certificate, if you need it and uh, if your uh, future employers ask you such a certificate. And of course, the most important thing is that finally, at the end of the course, and even in between, you will be able to understand all those coding memes that look like completely, complete nonsense, but you will figure out what all of that is about. So, the topics of this academy, which will spend for uh, multiple months every Saturday, are First of all, we will start really, really soft because I would like all of you guys to start from a common ground. So this means that I will probably be a little bit pedantic on how to use certain features of the computer, which you probably already know, but I need to make sure that everybody is, uh, is on the same, is on, at the same level, on the same spot. So we'll start softly. We will even start building a static website and deploy it in on, uh, online. So you will be able to show it to your friends, to your family and to whoever you want. And then we will start the real course. The real course will start with uh, a little bit of CLI, which just stands for Command Line Interface. So we're going to enter the matrix and go into that kind of interface in which you just type text and uh, you obtain stuff from your computer. Based on the CLI, well, the CLI, I, I want to do a little bit of that because um, CLI is a good excuse to understand how uh, paths in your file, file system work. So I would like to, uh, to tell you the difference between a relative path and an absolute path. And there are some cool commands that uh, allow you to do things that you are not able or not that easily able to do with a graphical user interface. Uh, the command line is uh, more performant, more powerful. And sometimes we will need, we will use tools that need the command line, so you cannot escape from that sometimes. And uh, after that we will use Git, we'll start using Git. Git is um, 
a source control, uh, source versioning software, which is very, very famous. And it is what will allow us to put all our work in an online portfolio. So all of the code that we will build together will be put on GitHub. So as, uh, as open source software. So anybody with the right link will be able to see your portfolio and, uh, and see your contributions in the open source uh, world. So Git is very important. And it's also the way you will be able to share code with me. So I will be able to read your code and uh, look at any problems, mistakes that you do and give you feedback on the quality of your solutions. So this is actually, as you can see, a real course. It's not just me doing my business, just typing and you watch it. It will be an interactive thing. It will be a real course in which you program along with me, then you do exercises by yourself and I will correct those exercises and I will show them to the class, okay? And then finally, this is the real meat of the course. We will do a little bit of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, which are the three languages of the web. These three languages are really, really important for multiple reasons. First of all, these are the languages of any web site, web application that you use every day. Even these slides are made with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. You can do anything with these three languages. In fact, recently, and by recently I mean 10 years ago, they started being used not only on the browser, but for uh, other purposes such as um, I don't know, server side code, uh, desktop applications, mobile applications. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And of course, once you understand one kind of language, you will be still able to learn other kinds of languages. So don't worry if JavaScript is not your cup of, K, uh, your cup of tea and you want to learn Java or Python or C Sharp, that's fine. But this will still be a good start. Okay. Can... Um, anyone tell me anything in the chat or are you already talking to me in the chat and I don't see you? I'm using the um, phone application of the chat. Okay, okay, I see uh, the, the chat in here. I see you're already here. Yeah, hello guys, it's finally starting. Yes, it is Angelo. Hi, it's so glad to see you here. And also Kesha says, hey Anthony, really excited to see how this turns out. Oh, I'm really excited too. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Okay, so these are the technologies that I'm going to teach you. But this course is not just about technologies. Otherwise, it would be just a programming tutorial uh, like every other programming tutorials that you see online. So I'm adding a little more than of, uh, to that. I would like to give you the proper mindset to solve any kind of problems with coding. So the first of all, I would like to inspire you with an experimental approach. So it's like uh, they do in science, right? So uh, we, 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 we formulate a hypothesis, we do experiments to, um, to reject that hypothesis. And if we do enough experiments, the hypothesis will not be rejected. In fact, it will be validated. So we will have a theory. This is exactly the same thing that we can do in coding. We can have a problem and state that the problem cannot be solved. But we start doing tests and writing code that disprove the fact that the problem cannot be solved. In fact, the problem can, can be solved. And finally, we've got a really good and stable and tested software at the end. So um, this is strictly related to a practice called test driven development in which you develop starting from the tests and the tests will guide your development. But we're not going probably to do real test driven development, especially not at first. It could be a good experiment, actually. But I would like to start with the generic experimental approach first. And this is the real important thing. I would like to teach you how to learn to learn. So you don't need to stick with me all the time and uh, I will not be your unique source of uh, truth. You will also be able to find resources by yourselves. You will be able to learn effectively, to, to find the material, to learn it and to use it proactively which is a quality that most employers nowadays really, really care about. They don't need an expert in JavaScript. They need someone who 
maybe has no experience in some technology, but is able to learn that technology and be uh, and be good at it in a short time and can be productive with that technology in a short amount of time. So this is another important thing. I would love you guys to learn to learn. And this is what we will focus on. Also, we want to embrace change. Those who know about agile development know that we must never follow a strict plan. We have to embrace change because things change constantly. The market changes, the technologies change. And instead of just complaining, we want to follow that change and even drive that change at, at times. I don't see any new messages in the chat, but it's normal. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you're still with me, right? <laughs> Okay, so, and uh, finally, I would like to share with you my passion um, for this world because I think that this is a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful environment, it's a beautiful uh, way to spend your time and it can even uh, give you some money uh, as a side effect. In fact, um, I would like you guys to find, if you haven't found it already, uh, your Ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese word that means a reason to live. And someone created this diagram which has no relation to the word Ikigai, but it's fine. Ikigai can be thought as uh, four things merged together. Something that you love doing, something that the world needs, something that you can be paid for, and also something that you're good at. If all four things happen at the same time, then you, pro you can say that you found your uh, Ikigai, your reason to live. Uh, as for me, I found my Ikigai and it's this, it's coding and it's teaching coding and uh, it's public speaking, which I love uh, a lot. <laughs> Zubair says, happy birthday, buddy. Thanks a lot, Zubair. Uh, that was uh, the surprise I'm gonna, I, I was gonna say in a while, but uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, for saying this. Yes, today is a very special day for me because we, there's a reason we started on the 17th of October. Today is my birthday. So I, would, I, I wanted just to uh, try and uh, spend m the, the, my first birthday with uh, some people that uh, I know and some people that I don't know yet from the internet. Uh, I will also do my celebrations after with uh, family and friends, but still um, from remote because we are in a pandemic. But still, uh, that was a, a cool thing to start my 38th birthday. So I'm going to give you this gift, which, which will be a, a long gift because it's not only today. It will be every Saturday from today. <laughs> Thank you, Angelo. Happy birthday to me. Um, so, as I was saying, I found my Ikigai, which is about coding and teaching coding. And this does not mean that it must be your Ikigai. Maybe you have other passions. And what I re would really love to transmit to you is that if you follow any of your passion, uh, you will succeed. You will definitely succeed somehow. So, I will show you how passionate I am in this thing. And if uh, you share this passion with me, that's great. If you don't share your, your passion with me, well, well, maybe you still saw how passionate a person can be and you will be uh, ready to follow your dream, whatever it is, with the same passion that I'm going to show you. Jabata says, hey man, happy birthday from me too. Wish you all the best and a lot of success following your passion. It's awesome that you are taking time for your special day uh, to show us some basics. Well, thank you guys for sticking with me. I assume that th this, is not, uh, this is not to be taken for granted. You are uh, entrusting me and uh, I want to repay you, uh, you repay your trust with, uh, with this course. So thanks a lot to you guys. So this is my Ikigai and we'll find our Ikigai together. My passion, my Ikigai is coding, which doesn't mean that it's uh, only fun and games. It's also a very frustrating activity. So one, one typical mindset that I will probably give you is don't give up. <laughs> don't give up at the first problem because you will face lots of problems. Sometimes you have a problem which is too complex and uh, it's frightening. So you will have to break down that problem into multiple sub problems, solve them independently and maybe find an overall solution step by step. So um, a methodic 
kind of process. And um, also, when you write code, you perform usually some mistakes, and so you introduce bugs to the code. So your solution becomes a little bit part of the problem, which is even more frustrating. So pay attention because coding is not just a fun thing. It's solving problems. So you have problems and you would need to have a problem solving attitude. I love this meme because it says name and describe the five key phases of software development. And this guy uh, put denial, bargaining, anger, depression, and acceptance, which is n another thing, actually. Um, Angela says, are there problems that you couldn't solve either? Um, no, I wouldn't say I couldn't solve those problems. Maybe I struggled a lot with them, but at the end of the day, you are always able to solve problems. In uh, computer programming, there are very few problems that you cannot solve at all, mathematically speaking. And um, in programming, it's all bits flying around. So uh, it's a fantastic world in which pretty much everything is possible. The only limitations are usually human, or are uh, performance-wise. So there are some problems which are so complex that it will take you years to solve them with a computer. For example, breaking a password. But we are having advancement in technology. So with quantum computers, for example, we can take a lot less time to break passwords, to break encryption, actually. So yeah, there are some problems which are difficult. There are some problems which are a completely different class of difficulty. But as far as I know, there were no real huge unsurmounted problems that I couldn't solve. And uh, usually when you have, um, when you find a client or an employer, they will always give you a problem that they pretty much know that it is solvable. So you're not going to probably solve a problem that doesn't exist yet, probably. But also there are some... Um, new grounds, new terrains that you can explore. For example, I don't know, uh, breakthrough, breakthroughs in VR, AR, gaming or whatever. There are some problems that we never even thought about. We can create those problems and see if we can solve them. But still, yeah, it's a problem solving activity. So coding can be frustrating. Please don't give up. And if you think that you're breaking and you want to give up, then let's speak about it, let's talk about it, and we'll make sure that you'll, you won't give up and you overcome any problems that you have. About me, my name is Matteo Anthony Mistretta. You can call me however you want, Matteo or Anthony. Uh, I have a nickname on uh, GitHub, which is Ice on Fire. On uh, 9 gag, it's Ice Under Fire, because apparently Ice on Fire was already taken, but bottom line is, it's a mixture of ice and fire. Um, one day I will tell you the reason of this nickname. It's not related to Game of Thrones. It's not because I thought it was cool. It's actually a, a stupid thing. But I am a software engineer. I graduated. I have a master's degree in computer engineering in Rome because I was born and raised in Rome. And then I moved to Turin, where I'm speaking now. I have 13 years of experience in software engineering and uh, five of which... Uh, as a freelancer, I started going freelance. And now that I'm a freelancer, I have so much freedom and so much time and so much energy to do also side projects, even volunteering. So uh, that's why I'm here. I love coding. I love teaching coding. I do sp public speeches around the world. I do courses. Uh, I am a teacher, uh, an offline teacher, as you can see from these pictures. And now, due to the pandemic, recently I started doing courses uh, from remote. And now I want to do the same on a global scale for free for you guys. Is the right one a stock photo? No, it isn't. No, uh, no. <laughs> it's a real photo of myself. Um, doing, um, well, uh, it, it was not coding, it was a, a test, uh, a preliminary test in order to get into the Power Coders program, which is a beautiful program made by some friends of mine that are trying to give a coding academy for refugees. And uh, this, was, this photo was taken in Turin when we started a pilot program exactly last year. And it was a very successful program. I'm still in contact with some of uh, these, with, with the former students. 
uh, they are they have found a successful job most of them and um, so yeah no this is not a stock photo this is actually me uh, laughing uh, for real with uh, with one of the um, one of his students and on the left of course it's another not stock photo it's me public speaking in front of a crowd of uh, young entrepreneurs and i was teaching the basics in general of technology for uh, for uh, for young entrepreneurs uh, all right you should make it a stock photo looks good okay why not thanks for the advice i will do it um, you can find the link to my website here. Uh, I would encourage you to also uh, find me on LinkedIn, add me on LinkedIn so we can connect, we can uh, maybe endorse some skills later on, we can do rec recommendations, etc, etc. I'm really social from a social network point of view, so just add me, befriend me, uh, whatever you want. I'm, I would be glad to connect with you guys. So, as I was saying, I am a teacher and now I started moving online as many teachers did in the past period. Uh, which is kind of strange because teachers always say, hey, being a streamer or YouTuber is not a real job. And then they found themselves being streamers or YouTubers, which is kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, in my experience, it's, it, it kind of works. Um, there is a, a little difference, of course. Um, well, when you do things offline, you can see people's faces. So if you see a puzzled face, you can adapt or you can uh, just uh, try to repeat the concept or slow down. While here, the feedback that I receive from you is just from the chat messages that I receive. So I don't know who's really attending, who's really watching, who is uh, attentive and who is distracted. So it, it is difficult for me to teach online. It is a little more difficult than doing it offline. But still, it is feasible, especially if you guys help me with the, in this process. About the material, I probably already mentioned it in the uh, past Saturdays. It's all for free. This is not a course in which I created material that I want to keep by myself. It's all there. It's all for you. I'm going to use free and open source material that you can easily find on Google. And the slides that I created are, well, they are not even that important. They, I will probably use them more to track the time, not just not to use them as material. We're going to use uh, online material uh, that, that I found and that I selected um, for you guys. Um, but still, everything is there for you. So if you think that um, you don't feel like following me in this, uh, in this academy and you want to learn from your, by yourself, then one thing that you can uh, benefit from this first lesson is, okay, here's the material uh, that I suggest you, now go learn by yourself. I think that if we do this together, it can be a little better because you will uh, have a community, you will have the certificate probably, um, we can uh, find new exercises, we can learn by, by our mistakes, which is usually the most important way to learn, is com performing mistakes, committing mistakes, solving them, understanding why we, perform we, we made that mistakes, etc. So, Stick with me if you feel like, but you're not forced to stick with me because everything is already there available for you. What about you guys? Um, well, I don't know who you are. Well, I know some of you. I know that some of you come from uh, Nine Gag, which is a platform that I love. And actually, lots of the memes that I use in my slides are stolen from Nine Gag. I, I created this one by myself, actually. But probably there is a similar meme out there, uh, and I didn't find it. Um, some of you come from Nine Gag. Some of you come from the Power Coders program. For example, Zubair I, is one of my former students, and I'm so happy to see him here. Uh, maybe he just he wants to to help the junior ones uh, knowing what the course is about. It's, it will be very similar to the course that we made in in Power Coders, and we also have people like Kesha was saying from EIA from the European Innovation Academy, which is a beautiful uh, school program in which entre young entrepreneurs um, that studied engineering, uh, marketing, business, economy from uh, different parts of the world gather together and in three weeks or in two weeks as uh, is the Qatar program 
them, they learn to build their uh, innovative startup with uh, a, a very diverse uh, team. It's a, a beautiful experience and I have been so lucky to have been part so far for uh, I think three or four years straight in which I was a tech mentor, then a speaker, and also tech mentor. And finally, the la last time I was even the head mentor, so I was responsible for the, the mentorship part. It's a beautiful family, and I really love them. They even boosted a little bit the communication on Instagram, um, may allow me to reach uh, now sh we should be uh, something like 158 followers, which is a staggering amount for me. So I really thank you also, EIA family. I really love you. Uh, so I don't know what is your experience, guys, as, uh, as programmers. Maybe you tried some programming courses online, maybe some tutorials on YouTube, maybe even bought uh, Code Academy or, I don't know, um, a Coursera or a Udemy course, and then you just lost motivation. You, you felt that you were not going anywhere. It looked like uh, just uh, an exercise with no, uh, with no outcome. I don't know. Um, or, well, one thing that I would like, to, one kind of people that I would like to address is those people that cannot afford a course, not even one on a Udemy, even if it's very cheap, or just don't have the right amount of motivation. Maybe you didn't have that kind of teacher, of mentor, that really makes you like the subject. And this is where I'm trying as much as I can to, uh, to recover from this, uh, from this lack of uh, good teachers and mentors that are, he are there to teach you, but also to motivate you. So this is the usual thing that happens. Schools always uh, push up successful students while they leave students who need help behind. And this is exactly what I'm not going to do. I don't want anyone to be left behind, which is a difficult task because of course, if there is at least one person that is really, really slow learner, then I need to step back and make the lesson way slower for the rest of the class. We will try to find a good balance between going fast enough at the right pace, but also never leave anyone behind. Uh, PNTM says, is the course suitable for starters that have zero knowledge about coding? Yes, yes. I will turn you from zero to hero, as they say in, uh, I think it was Hercules by Disney, or maybe it's just... Um, an old saying that you that we use in English, but yes, I will start from really the the, the basics, the basics of uh, even how to use certain parts of the computer. So don't worry, uh, everyone will be able to follow, even if they don't have any experience in coding whatsoever. And I will try as much as I can to never leave anyone behind. So as a good friend of us would say, I will. Uh, Never give you up, never, never want to let you down, never going to turn around and desert you, okay? You've just been rigged rolled on day zero of my course. Sorry for that. Uh, it, it was needed. Okay, so about the academy. Uh, if you see me looking down here, it's because I have the chat open, okay? So I'm just going to, <laughs> to look from time to time to see if there are some any any questions any messages pntm says great nice and uh, tivere 77 says hope so cuz that's me awesome <laughs> yes yes um, this is the academy for you although let's talk a little bit about the academy sorry for this long long introduction but i think it's um, it's a good way to also make you feel the pace and the enthusiasm that we are going to, to use throughout the whole academy. So, about the academy, as of course, it's a non-conventional thing. Uh, it's not a Twitch stream, because I am not a streamer. There are some very experienced streamers out there on Twitch and other platforms. I am not. I am a teacher. I'm not a streamer. So, usually streams, uh, especially on Twitch, are people that are doing their stuff. For example, they are practicing uh, guitar, bass, or the trumpet, or they are um, playing games. 
and usually the followers of these streamers are just there watching and commenting and uh, interacting with uh, with cool sounds and um, and cool icons out there but this is not a twitch stream i'm not doing my thing by myself i'm going to interact a lot with you i'm going to type code wait for you to to, to type the code yourself and ask you at any time if uh, everything works for you and we're trying to address the problems if uh, the code is not working for you. So this is uh, how we're going to do it. Veronica says, hi, I'm so glad I made it. Don't know what time it starts. It starts at 9 a.m. UTC, which means 9 a.m. Greenwich time. And uh, right now it's 11.30 my time. So it's 9.30. So you lost the first half an hour. Uh, don't worry about that because it was just a presentation and still I'm recording the stream and I will probably upload it also on YouTube. So you will be able to, um, to, to catch up with anything we said. So you just lost uh, half an hour, that's fine. So I was saying this academy is non-conventional because it's not a Twitch stream. I'm not a streamer, I'm a teacher. I'm just using a, a streaming platform in order to teach and reach as many people that I can. It's not a YouTube tutorial. YouTube tutorials are videos that you just watch. You can follow around, you can stop the video, but still there's no interaction in that. We are instead interacting just like if we were having uh, a class in Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever platform you, you usually use to do online lessons. So it is a real course. It's just moved online due to, well, First of all, the pandemic, but also because uh, this way I can reach people from uh, Utah, from Germany, from uh, the Philippines. Uh, I would really love to know where you guys come from. I would assume that Veronica comes from the Czech Republic, maybe. Let's see if she can uh, confirm that, because th the name says, yay, you're Czech. So it it's so nice to to see you here with us from the Czech Republic. Um, so, the Academy is also Amsterdam, Indonesia. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Spain, Brooklyn, New York. So, is it, is it very, uh, is it the, the deep night in Brooklyn, New York right now? I think it is. Unfortunately, this time zone is not really good for the Americas, but, um, Okay, there was one guy that messaged me from Utah and said, oh, that's fine because I'm going to uh, do night shifts so I can still follow. Early AM. Whoa. So I don't know if you were awake by yourself, but if you were not and you woke just for this course, then I thank you really so much from the bottom of my heart. Usual wake up time for work anyhow. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Nice. Uh, we've got people from East Italy, Esther. Hi, Esther. So, FC7 on the Rock comes from Amsterdam. Australia! That's beautiful. Wow, that, that's awesome. So many people from, uh, from everywhere. And this is why I think that Twitch can be a good platform, or any streaming platform can be a good platform, so I can reach all of you. Um, speaking of the amount of effort, it's a bootcamp which means that it will be hard. <laughs> it will be hard like in the military. I will go really fast, but not too fast. I will just try to go as fast as you can bear. If you cannot bear it, then I, can, I will slow down. But if I'm going too slow, I will, buy, I will try to make people catch up and then go fast again. Because, well, out there, it, it is a war between multiple developers. Uh, the, the market is uh, getting a little bit saturated. There's so many self-taught developers. And I would like uh, you guys to have uh, those superpowers that I think that we can all have if we have the right guidance. So I will uh, be a little tough with you, but we'll also try to uh, have as much fun as we can. But it will be tough. So as I was saying, it will be tough. It will be a long boot camp. In fact, we're going to have one lesson every Saturday, but we can adapt that. If you, are, uh, if you want it, we can try to have multiple lessons per week, if you can, or we can have less lessons per week, but then we, I need to give you some exercises to do during the, uh, between streams. 
Uh, what is the difference between programmer, developer and software engineer? <laughs> this is a beautiful question and uh, I think that I cannot really give you a straight answer because many people have different, uh, d different uh, meanings for those words. Uh, you also forgot coder, which is another uh, another very used word. In fact, I use it in my in my brand, in Glorious Coders. So, programmer comes, of course, from the word programming, because uh, long a long time ago, computers were machines, just like very um, very basic calculators and you wanted to program the machine so it did what you wanted. So programming is a bit like planning. You are planning the machine, so you say, hey machine, th do this, then do that, then do this other thing, and then you execute the program and the machine does the program. So a programmer is a planner, is someone that programs the machine. A developer is probably a, a new term because a developer develops, it designs things. Uh, so, a developer is exactly the same thing as a programmer, but from the point of view that the machine is not, uh, a, the, the computer is not a machine anymore, is, uh, it's a machine that can host applications that you develop, that you build, that you design. So, I think that the, the exception here is a little more towards the, the craftsmanship, rather than uh, plain planning and programming. So if I read programming and developer, I always think of the programmer as uh, some sort of, um, um, uh, I, I don't know, um, someone who works in the industry, um, some robotic person that just do uh, plannings, but a developer is someone who crafts things. And a software engineer is usually related to people that have at least uh, uh, graduated in something like software engineering, computer engineering, computer science. Uh, and a software engineer can do lots of things with the software. Usually an engineer is someone who solves problems, uh, usually solves complex problems with simple solution. A software engineer solves complex problems with simple solution through software. And that's it. But it's not only about programming. Maybe it's also setting up a network or uh, securing uh, a firewall, a proxy, or it can be really lots of things. And software engineers can also, of course, work as developers and as programmers. Uh, in my case, I think that a software engineer is a developer that knows a little bit more than a usual developer because the software engineer has studied some practices that will allow not just to build software, but to build good software. So uh, I will probably start mentioning agile, design patterns, test-driven development, continuous integration, some practices that nowadays are getting quite common, but uh, in early days they were not that common. So there was a slight difference between common developers and software engineers. But you are going to be software engineers. Um, and then coder. Coder is someone who writes code. So it's exactly the same thing as developer, programmer. It's just people that write code and solve problems. I don't think those job titles are so correlated with job responsibilities in practice. True. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I remember that uh, a few years ago, uh, recruiters always looked for analyst slash programmer. And I think that analyst slash programmer is not a term widely used nowadays. Uh, but what is an analyst slash programmer? It's someone who can uh, perform an analysis of the problem, so who can understand the problem, and then by programming can solve that problem. So the programmer uh, in early days was just the person that solved the problem. But we needed an analyst that was able to describe the problem in formal terms so the programmer would be able to solve that problem. Nowadays, we don't make this uh, huge distinction and we prefer to have someone who is both an analyst and a programmer. So that's more of a developer, a coder or a software engineer. 
But still, there's so many other um, meanings that people come up with and we can look at them on, uh, on Google if we want. We can have a look at uh, the different nuances that people think about these terms. So, the bootcamp will be tough, it will be long, and of course, it will not be exhaustive. Uh, we are going to start from the real basics and we're going to go as far as we can, given the people that we have, given the time that we have, given the commitment that we can give. I will try to give you as much as I can. I will try to finish the program, which means uh, CLI, Git, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And then, well, uh, some of you know it already, I love to give uh, for free. So sometimes I even create, did uh, free workshops about some more advanced concepts for those who really enjoy this kind of, uh, of content. Um, someone asked me already, will, I, will we going to do um, algorithms like the data structures and algorithms exam that we have in university? Well, that's a tough exam and I don't want to threaten you. Uh, I don't want to frighten you with uh, such complex problems, but I will do my best to, to, to give you all the tools in order to, uh, to, to understand these concepts easily by yourself. Let's try. Or we can do some, uh, some algorithms together. We will definitely do some search algorithms, which are probably some of the easiest ones. But sorting algorithms and uh, algorithms based on uh, strange data structures such as trees, I don't know about that. We will see. Um, we will see according to your needs, guys. Um, okay, so it's not exhaustive because we will only scratch the surface, unfortunately, but we can go deeper later on. We will see. Uh, the important thing that is that we will build the proper mindset because if you have the proper mindset you will be able to continue by yourself with the help of the community, with the help of me or completely by yourself. But I want you guys to be autonomous as soon as possible because that's the most important thing. The expected outcome can be described with uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, writings that I received. So the first one on the left is a recommendation that I had, that I received on LinkedIn, and you can find it on LinkedIn. This guy, Gabriel, followed a course, a paid course, that was a paid course, but he didn't spend anything because it was financed by the European Union or something like that. But still, he followed my course, he really enjoyed it, and he became uh, a developer. And I like his, um, uh, his recommendation, not because he's complimenting me, not because of that, but let's see what he says. Anthony's teaching methods are so well done, so fast-paced, so rich of details. Having him as my teacher was an honor. He doesn't let anyone stay behind. He explains certain concepts so well that you cannot help not seeing them everywhere on well-made web applications. So this is the sentence that I want to stress a little bit. I explained some Java to him, Java is not JavaScript, it's a different language, but I explain, I, I taught him Java, the led Java language, Java frameworks, etc, etc. And then he found a job which required a different language, which was C Sharp and the platform called .NET. But that was not an obstacle for him because the concepts behind are so similar that he could switch really easily from the technology Java to the technology C Sharp because everything was really, really similar. So that's the real important thing. If you focus on the Java language, the Java syntax, as soon as someone asks you a different technology, you don't know where to start. But if you understand deeply the concepts behind, you will be able to learn a new language or a new technology in no time. Because you will see patterns, you will see that things are pretty much the same, except for some uh, uh, technical details, some uh, um, details about the, the, the syntax maybe. Then he says, he's highly energetic, he has a rich package of knowledge about a lot of frameworks and technologies for web development, he knows a lot about mostly everything web-related, frameworks, design patterns, MVC, unit testing, integration testing, test-driven development, which means that that was a course about Java 
programming, but I gave as much as I could. I even gave information about uh, software engineering. And this was uh, really a game changer for him because when he did his first interview, they asked him the singleton, I think, the singleton design pattern, and he knew it really, really well. So it's not about the language, it's a pattern, it's a, a, con a high level concept uh, of uh, software engineering. And uh, the recruiter was uh, amazed by the fact that a junior, which isn't supposed to have any experience, any know how whatsoever, was actually even better than some of the experienced uh, software developers that they had already. So I think that that's uh, really uh, a good, good, really good outcome that I, that I saw. Then he says, I was sometimes amazed about how someone can know so much. Thanks to Anthony and the very well done course of Angular, Spring, Hibern and the rich information he has given me, I was able to get a job in the web developing field. Thank you, Anthony. Okay, this is a recommendation, however. So, of course, he's, he's saying a lot of uh, nice things to me and he's... Uh, He's advertising, uh, and I really thank him for that. Um, Veronica says, so far it sounds great. Thank you so much for doing this. I've been meaning to learn coding for a long time, but didn't know where and how to start. This could be a good start. Maybe not. Let's see. I really hope it's a good start for you. And it will also be a good end. Uh, the other text that you can see is not a recommendation. It was a personal message that really warmed my heart because it's from one of my former students from a Power Curtis program. He was a Glovo driver, uh, a Glovo rider, sorry. Uh, but he always had a passion for computers. But he didn't know where to start and he didn't have the time, the opportunity to and to, to start uh, doing work in this business. And at the end of the course, he gave me this uh, private message on Slack. Hi, Anthony, I hope that you're doing good. It has been a long time since we spoke, but it does not mean that I have forgotten you. I remember you whenever I'm coding. You are not there, but whatever you have taught us is with me and helping me every day and with every reward I am getting on each step, I thank you from the core of my heart. Now, I wanted to share with you that where I work, they gave me the good news of my new contract for 12 months after this tirocinio, which means internship, will finish. I wanted to thank you for the guidance and inspiration. If you weren't my teacher, I wouldn't have such a passion for coding and I wouldn't be here where I am today. Thanks and have a good day. This is the reason why I'm doing this today. <laughs> this is the reason why I want to continue uh, teaching and try to reach as many people as possible. Because you can imagine the amount of satisfaction and the warmth I feel in my heart when I receive messages such as this one. So thanks a lot for uh, giving me the opportunity to continue to do this on a global scale. Okay. Something could go wrong, I know. Uh, many things could, could go really, really wrong. First of all, we could have technical problems. We could have lots of technical problems. We could have downs in the network. My network is not really, really stable. I really hope that it will uh, work for as, as much as possible. We could have technical problems with, uh, with the devices, even with your devices. I expect you guys to have at least one computer. You cannot follow this academy just by watching the stream on your phone. You have to uh, have a computer and you, if you have only one computer with uh, only one screen, then you will, tr you will need to split the screen into two pieces, one with my screen, with my streaming, and one with your code. You, so you can follow along and, uh, and do the work together with me. If you have two screens, that's even better, of course, but I assume that Lots of people out there don't have a screen. Maybe they don't even have a computer and they cannot follow because they are in a third world country or uh, I don't know, they probably aren't able to afford uh, a full computer, uh, a full device, a full, the, the right technology, the proper technology to follow this course. That's why I really believe, for example, in the community. Because if, for example, someone from Indonesia uh, doesn't have a computer and someone else from Indonesia, for example, PNTM, has a spare computer that doesn't use anymore, maybe they can uh, get in contact and uh, PNTM can send the computer to that person for free, maybe, or with a little um, shipping expense from his side. But still, in this way, we can really help each other um, in, in a practical way, not only by sharing information, but also by sharing technology, maybe. I don't know if this can work. But if it worked, that would be really awesome. And if it doesn't work, 
uh, I will probably need to find uh, sponsors or uh, some some financing of uh, of any sort. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, nothing is completely planned from the start. We are still going to see how it uh, evolves. So we could have lots of technical problems. Five, uh, well, two hours ago, my neighbor was hammering the walls. So I really hope that he doesn't do it right now. And I really hope that we will be able to, uh, to continue the stream uninterrupted. Or I'm also waiting for a package to be delivered so I could have my, my doorbell rang. I really hope it doesn't uh, come right now, maybe later on, maybe the, in the afternoon. Still, we've got, we can have multiple technical problems. Another problem that we can have and that can make the academy go wrong, if, there are, if, if there's too many people, because if the class is 10 people, we can make it pretty good. If the class is 20 people, then I will start struggling. If the class is comprised of 500 people, then it would be really, really difficult to follow each one of them and uh, know their names and uh, remember all their progresses, etc., etc. That's why in the community, in the Slack workspace, I also have, I already have uh, some uh, very good, experienced developers that are already part of my network. In fact, Inglorious Code has started as a network of trusted developers that uh, share the co a common passion for technology and also probably a passion for, uh, for doing good things, to, to leave a good mark in this world. So as soon as you, um, as soon as you join the, the, the Slack workspace, you will see that there are already people there that will probably volunteer uh, in order to help me help you guys. Uh, another problem that we can have if, is if we have very, very different levels, of course. If we are almost everyone at the same level, that's fine, we can keep a steady pace. But if there is one which is really, really good and uh, one which is really, really a slow learner, then of course I have to slow down sometimes and the person that is really good will probably get bored, get annoyed, and, uh, and will probably want to quit the academy because they can do the course by themselves, which is fine, of course. I'm not, I'm not forcing you to stay here. But still, uh, if uh, anything of, like this kind happens, I will try to do my best in order to make the slow learners a little faster and uh, give some more challenges to the fast learners so they will be forced to slow down. So they have extra challenges, and extra things to learn, maybe. Uh, of course, the last thing that can really jeopardize this uh, academy is distractions. For example, I know that uh, well, uh, apart from the, uh, from the uh, delays that we are experiencing, there are going to be quite uh, hyped games such as Cyberpunk and uh, I really hope that you will not leave me to play games all day because playing games is fine, I play games too and I probably buy Cyberpunk at a, at a certain point in my life but um, there's also this game that we are doing which is very fun and also very important for your future so I would love you guys to try and be as not distracted as possible. Play some games, play some musical instruments, do your work, do your life, but also stick with me till the end, if you can. So, this means that the course can go really well, it can go really badly. One day I could have zero followers, zero watchers, and in that case I will probably stop. But if I have at least one watcher, one follower, then I will continue. I, I just need one watcher, one follower, and I will definitely continue till the end. So I need some requirements from you guys in order to make the, the course work. Uh, first of all, you, you should be on time. And I'm not talking to, um, to Veronica. <laughs> But I'm because she didn't know this is the first day, then that's fine. Um, I'm talking mostly about my Italian and Arab friends because I know that it's a common place, but we usually are quite late. So, <laughs> no, no, don't worry, Veronica, really, it's not, it's not about you. You see that the slides were already prepared like that. So, I'm not going to, uh, to say that you are the cause of uh, all that. Um, no, the cause is that we usually, uh, we Italians and also the Arabs are. Uh, 
quite um, are always joking about themselves about that you know that we are pretty similar in this case uh, we usually come up really really late but please be on time i will try to start the streaming maybe one minute or five minutes before 9 a.m so you will have a notification and you will be ready to start following the lesson exactly at 9 a.m uh, probably this could be a good way to um, to limit the the the, the lateness um, well I would ask you to be focused, of course, so I cannot see what you are doing, but I don't know if you are watching anime and also uh, hearing me. Uh, I am speaking a lot, but you will see that uh, later on I will speak, but also type a lot of code. And I would uh, really love you guys to follow me along and write the code yourself, because otherwise it's like trying to learn how to play bass by just watching Daily 504. It does no use. You have to practice, practice, practice. Jabata says, sorry for taking you off your pace. However, I wanted to ask two more questions. Yes. So, will you be showing us how to use Flexbox SAS less in the CSS part of our course? Or would they be just the basics and will be heavily focused on the JS part and CSS and HTML are markups? If we are not going to cover the sorting algorithms, can we at least look through the quick sort that's most commonly used so we can get an overall grasp of how they work and how to implement them? Yes and yes. So, I think that Flexbox is really, really important as a topic in the CSS part. So, I want to uh, explore Flexbox and also... Also CSS Grid. I will uh, also point you to some very good online resources out there. And um, yes, we can also do the some sorting algorithms such as quick sort. That's fine. Yeah, why not? But before doing the quick sort, I have to make sure that we beat the first boss of our game, which is the for loop. Um, in my past experience, I saw that the for loop is. Uh, really difficult for someone to grasp so we'll go really slow in the for loop and as soon as i understand as i see that everyone really understood it deeply then we can go to search algorithms and maybe also one of the sorting algorithms such as the quick sort it is a pretty important algorithm to understand in order to have the proper mindset but I can assure you that it's not a really important algorithm whenever you work. Because when you work, you will probably use quicksort algorithms that are already implemented. You will nev probably never create your own sorting algorithm. In fact, this is another really important feature of programming. Usually, you solve problems by using pre-made solutions and integrate them together in your overall solution. So you don't need to go on a, on a low level every time. You can uh, just uh, use a ready-made solution, maybe customize it a little bit, tailor it to your needs and uh, focus on uh, higher level problems. But still, it's very important from a teaching point of view to learn uh, some of these algorithms because they, they, they help you think more logically. So it could be uh, yeah, a good exercise. So be on time, be focused, which means try to listen carefully to what I say. One thing that I understood is that some people that do not have a technical background are used to hear a person speaking and... Uh, and, and just take some bits of the, of the overall sentence. In, uh, when we deal with technical subjects instead, every single word in every single sentence usually counts. Well, now I'm really speaking a lot, but usually um, everything that I say when I'm speaking technical is really, really important. You have to weight it a lot. So focus a lot you have to listen carefully understand deeply what i'm saying every time and also read carefully there's an old saying there's an old uh, acronym which has which says r t f m read the friggin manual so you have to read instructions really carefully um every single word will count and you will see uh, what this is about and you also have to write carefully because in programming even a difference in one character even if uh, even a capital letter uh, instead of a lowercase letter can make the difference can make your program break or fail without really breaking so you don't know 
what's the problem there so you have to be extra careful and in fact the first thing the first assignment that i will give you today will be about uh, improving your accuracy in, uh, in in writing code in in writing of course well be respectful um we have some levels of moderations here, but please don't be harsh towards other people. I'm talking to you, nine gaggers. On nine gag, we can be harsh, we can uh, we can be dank. Here, we will try to be respectful and try to respect uh, slow learners as fa as much as fast learners. Uh, we will try to be all friends, all uh, a big family together. Try to be humble which means that sometimes there are some uh, very good elements in the class that feel that they can really do uh, they can really learn by themselves or they could even teach better than better than me which is probably the case i i'm not assuming it's not like that but still know that everyone here has something to learn i am learning too i am learning to do streaming courses on Twitch and it could be not perfect but I will improve over time so try to remember that you have lots of strengths but you also have limits and everyone else has limits so be respectful towards everyone and try to be humble also uh, because you don't know everything as much as I don't know everything so one thing trust me if you think that I'm not doing a good work because you're not uh, motivated enough or uh, you're going too slow or uh, you think that I'm not giving you the right metaphor for that or you think that I'm, um, I'm dealing with uh, one subject before dealing with another subject that you think it's more important you can be right and we can discuss about this but overall try to trust me because I have some experience in this and uh, I... I tested some things, some things go, go, went wrong, some things went right and I have an overall picture of how to, uh, to, to deal with this kind of course. I'm open to suggestions, in fact, I'm going to tell this now, but still, try to trust me and um, because I, most of the times I know what I'm doing. Uh, try to be social. Uh, some people are very shy. I don't see too many shy people here. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but I started seeing so many messages and I already love this. I love how proactive you are. I love the kind of feedback you are doing, you're giving. I love the, uh, the, the suggestions and the advice that you are giving me. That's already really, really awesome. So I will give you a link to the Slack workspace. Try to be proactive there too, try to share um, documentation, try to share problems, try to share solutions. Uh, it would be awesome to see a thriving community of people that uh, really care for each other. And yeah, be, be proactive. So give me constant feedback because this is the cool thing about this course. Uh, it, it's a live course, so you can give me feedback and I can adjust the pace uh, according to your needs. And try to help each other. So everything that I already did. Uh, it's um, 10, it's 10 uh, a.m. UTC. And usually after a couple of hours, I do 15 minutes of uh, 15 minutes of coffee break. I don't know if we are going to go the full four hours. I don't think so. Uh, so for this kind of uh, presentation slash setup, we are going to do uh, a little bit of setup on your computers and uh, I'm going to give you some things that you, we can start doing right now today and you can continue doing them later on by yourself as, a, as an exercise. But first of all we do this uh, 15 minutes of coffee break which probably means that I can do this. Starting from now we're going to uh, meet in 15 minutes, right? Okay, so bye, see you later.